Betsy, let's talk about this reintroduction of the trio top pattern. Okay. I can't remember exactly when we first put it out, but it included at the time a t-shirt and pants. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have since uh, digitized and produced the trio top, or trio t-shirt and added plus sizes up to 3X. Yes. But today we are talking about the trio top. top. Yes. And you said? Everybody wants the trio top. I get emailed all the time for this shirt. So, so it's here for it's all of you <laughs> who finally want it. And we think it's because of this detail that happens to be very unique. Yeah, so it's got a back insert, a back yoke, if you will, but it is inserted into the garment and it is a perfect blank canvas for another fabric or embroidery or just a pop of something. And it has this beautiful line that falls into some really gentle gathers at right. the bottom. So it's a very flattering drape. Um, yes. One thing I really like about it is that the sleeve is part of the pattern. So when you take it out, you see this boxy shape and that includes the sleeve. But instead of doing a cuff or an actual sleeve, you just do a nice bias binding at the end. And I think that it, it's, it's easy and it looks really kind of clean and, and put together. Yes, and it, ha it has a nice shape. So it's not a continuation straight up of the side seam. Right. It does curve. Yeah. And so the shoulder has a nice fall over the uh, shoulder as well. Mm -hmm. For those who are intimidated by collars and stands, of course we have a great tutorial on how to do them. We give you two options of how to do collars and stands. But you can also just put the stand without the collar or leave both of them off and create a facing or another mm -hmm. kind of collar if you want to. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier about the fact that we don't know that this bottom eighth button is really necessary. It's I in the pattern, so. you're welcome to do it, but somehow I think it might be a little more attractive with just one less button than the pattern calls for. I could also see if you're doing like a jacket weight, you could do four big buttons, kind of right. evenly spaced would be nice. Right, or even one major button or no buttons mm -hmm. would be all right. Yesterday when I was frantically trying to finish it, yeah. I was like, could I do no buttons? Right, but right. I decided That's right. to go for it. Well, let's just peel this back yeah. for a second um, to show the t-shirt. This is the Trio t-shirt. And what I like about it, I see I didn't cover up the little shoulder pads very well here, but it has raglan lines. And I know there are people out there who think you can't wear raglans, but that's actually not true with this because it has a seam across the shoulder and down the sleeve so that you can shape this to fit you exactly. Mm -hmm. People who think they can't wear raglan are generally narrow shouldered or uh, drop shouldered. Mm -hmm. But because you can shape this, and put the bend where your shoulder is, then this is a, this is a design feature. Yeah, so. and I think this is a classic shirt. It's, it's um, relatively fitted. I mean, I wouldn't say it's yeah. totally fitted, but it skims the body. Um, but that makes it really nice for putting under something like the That's right, the there's not a lot of volume. And yeah. it's longer mm -hmm. and meant to be longer. Uh, I think it's about the length that I have on, as yeah, a matter of fact. There you go. <laughs> so yes, I like this layered kind of effect. So you can wear this shirt summertime, sort of quote sleeveless like Betsy has on, or you can wear it over uh, the t-shirt or any t-shirt that you want. I have it on over a t-shirt, which is what I like to do when it starts cooling off. So um, there we have it. Uh, just a side note about the Trio t-shirt. When we reintroduced that, we added three plus sizes. Yes. One, two, and three X. Yeah. So just know that. Uh, that's, we don't always do that, but we're trying to do that to some of our patterns where we feel like it's important. Yeah. And I would like to um, talk about the Trio pants for just a second because that is another thing that people ask about all the time. But in fact, when we brought out the Picasso pants, which is what Linda is wearing right now, right. that is very similar to that right. trio pant pattern. So it's actually the same shape of, of leg and side panel. Everything's mm -hmm. the same about it except the very, very bottom, yeah. which on the Picassos is more of a lantern shape. And you can add pockets uh, in the front seam or patch pockets that straddle the panel. I think in the trio pants, there were some low cargo pants, which were useless anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, I think I would pair it, if you want the whole look like the original yeah. threesome, then make the Picasso pants. Yeah, or if you, if you see the trio, you know, people find the old patterns and right. they're like, where is this pant? Just 
Go for the Picasso. Part. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, let's talk about some of these little details yeah. uh, in a little more depth here. So one of the trios that I brought out from the vault is this one. So it's in a solid color, but it's really accentuated with this print fabric, cotton fabric for a binding. And then it has this little white line, which I consider kind of a feature. You could be like a magic marker line, except it's fabric. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And it is in one of our tutorials called Three Bias Bindings. But you start out with uh, whatever you want the little edge to be, the little part that peeks out. So this is a one inch wide piece of fabric cut on the bias that's been pressed in half. And then you sew that down the center of a three inch wide piece that's also on the bias. So that's been sewn. And the distance from the fold is how much is going to show when the garment is done. OK. so like that part right exactly there. Okay. so this is about an eighth of an inch from the fold and you want to be real careful and make that stitching line really even so there's a stitching line right there which is in the center of this three inch piece and long time ago there was a chalk mark there that's long gone <laughs> so then this gets uh, this piece gets folded I think I have this on here a little bit well no I don't either well maybe a little bit backwards yeah I've reversed it. I should turn it upside down. But you fold this fabric wrong sides together and expose this. And then that gets sewn onto the edge of the uh, wrong side of your garment. OK, so it looks like that when you sew it on. And that gets wrapped to the right side. And pressed. And so then you stitch that in this ditch next to that little feature line. So it's almost like a tiny welt piping? It does look like bit, a very like a tiny, tiny flat welt. piping. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this again. Uh, so the inside. Well, that wasn't done that way. Interesting. <laughs> yes, it, well, yes, it is. Um, so you can see that the inside is very clean. And all of the detail is on the outside. The nice thing about that is that look how the buttons are done in the oh, wow. seam That's of that, cool. which is pretty cool. But even the side seam can be hidden then. So you sew the side seams before you do the top stitching of this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that all of the, the detail is brought to the face, but the inside of the garment is very, very clean. Oh, I think it's a cool detail. I would love to give the person credit who I learned this from. I know she lives in Albuquerque. <laughs> and I, for the last many hours, have been trying to think of her name. So if you're out there, let me know, because I would love to give you credit. I'm so sorry. I, I like to give people credit that I learn things from. I was going to bring this up to the camera, because I like the stitching. Yeah, that, that stitching there. is a little blanket stitch rather than a straight stitch. Can you see that? Cool. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of unusual. So that it is, yes. All right, so then uh, for the yoke that we've been talking about. Oh, do you need this still? Yeah. Um, that yoke is inserted in one piece, so you're not at a seam. So it's very, very, very important that at those corners of the yoke that you stay stitch on the 5 8 inch line so that you can clip to that corner. That's the only way you can insert the yoke and, and open that up so you're basically sewing it flat. Mm -hmm. Did you have any trouble when you sewed it? I didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a lightweight fabric, so I think yeah. that helped too. Good. And then for that easing or gathering across the bottom, my favorite way of gathering is to um, zigzag, <clears throat> excuse me, zigzag stitch over some pearl cotton or maybe a button hole weight, or button uh, thread. What's that called? Button uh, weight thread. Button right? weight thread. I think so. Yeah. So that I, this green right here represents the <clears throat> heavier cord 
that then I anchor at one end and then I can evenly uh, distribute the gathers in the fullness and then sew right over that. It's so much easier than trying to push it, push it and make it even and all that. So you get this all evened up first and then you're ready to just put, uh, put it right sides together and it's hidden in there. And you can always pull that out if you want to. So those are some details of the red one at least. So, so we have a, another uh, interesting idea of how to make the trio. This is actually a linen knit with a woven collar and stand. And I like it because it's like a little twin set. Mm -hmm. So this is the... Is it the Anne's tank? Mix it. Oh, it's the mix it tank. This is the mix it tank, but it's double layer. And both edges are raw. And one is shorter than the other. So it's kind of it's a fun detail. Really? And yet it's very yeah. finished around the neck. Mm -hmm. So you can wear it as a little jacket mm -hmm. and make it out of the same fabric. So that's one idea. You have, well, let me uh, mine is chiffon. chiffon. You went all Silk the way. <laughs> chiffon. And I just love it. I don't even know that I have it on. It's so wonderful and it's elegant. And yet the print on it is casual. And I just really like it. And really, this is a great garment for that because there's not a lot of seams right. so if you don't want to fuss with silk chiffon right. like an easier pattern is the way to do it exactly so yours though mine is out of you're gonna be shocked yeah oh i'm just so <laughs> really liberty of london you're making something in liberty of london liberty hmm. of london fall fabric which we also have right. a whole collection from so um, this, is their, this is their newest collection. It is not their classic collection. Right. This is their art collection. We think of those cl classics as what I call the little ditties. Yeah. The small, not, they're not all necessarily like that, but we think of them as the small little floral prints, yeah. which you can get over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But their collections that come out a couple of times a year, you see this and it's gone. Yeah. This is, so this is what they call the art collection? Yeah, I think it's called the art collection. This particular collection was an Odyssey themed, so it is based on um, stories and ideas of like Greek and Roman classical myths. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, and there were three kind of themes within it. So there was earth and ocean and universe. Okay. So, um, what I, and it, they said that they put like a pop art twist on it. So they're looking at you know, classical images and myths and then kind of added a little pop art modern twist so do to they uh, hire con uh, outside artists or are they all inside people it is it is a combination so okay. some of these and we'll talk about them are reused prints so they came from the vault and they've redone them okay but some they worked with like this one is a british artist who goes by the name susie lipsy which is S-O-O-Z-Y-L-I-P-S-E-Y. OK. And she does some really incredible, um, she, well, she does a lot of things, mixed media, but she does some really beautiful paintings where she adds kind of this, you see this graffiti with the paint kind of spilling down on top of a more classical, like, flower bouquet, or in this case, the um, Greek statue. So there were two of these that we got from this collection, and those are her designs. And that's what you used front that and back. That is what I used. So yes, so this pattern, this is actually called Susie Lipsy. We have it in two different colors, which we'll get into. Um, you, of course, I chose the pink, the bright of course. pink. And um, then in the back, I put in what is called Muse. And so. What is it again? It's called Muse. Muse, OK. Yep. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So you can yeah you can see the influence of the mm -hmm. statuary mm -hmm. with the modern graffiti thing. That's pretty cool. I didn't really realize what was going on with these. Yeah. I know when they came in, they were very different than what we've ever had yes. before. Yes. And I thought they were really incredible. Yeah. So Muse, you can really see like the graffitiness of mm -hmm. it. It almost looks like a drop cloth, and then you've got the statuary in it. This one, which is called Athena, and we've got two colorways. We've got a golden and kind of like a really dark, it's almost like an ocean blue. Yeah, um, it's a very green mm -hmm. blue, forest green blue and some black, yeah. yeah. And then the, the pink one, these were inspired by um, Andy Warhol's work in the 80s of some Renaissance buildings. Oh, really? So he had done his 
signature look to them. So they were inspired by Andy Warhol's work. Interesting. This is another Susie Lipsy. This one is called Aphrodite's Rose. And the story of Aphrodite says that when she came out of the water, as she walked across the sand, roses sprang from where she walked. So they used digital imagery and photography to make it look like it was roses underwater. So they're all slightly distorted, um, and you can kind of see the water yeah. in there. Well, that's interesting. When you tell a story about this, it, it means a little bit more, doesn't it, yeah. how the design was inspired? Yeah. Of course, all of these are on the Tana Lawn, which we've yes. talked about in previous uh, uh, sessions uh, of our tutorials. That's they feel like silk. Yeah. I mean, they really kind of feel like what I have on in yeah. the chiffon, yeah, although they're, it doesn't feel they're like opaque. It <laughs> and they're uh, uh, beautiful to sew, yeah. super easy to sew. Beautiful to sew. This one is called Calypso, and this one is, uh, this was originally designed in 1975. Oh, really? So they pulled this from the archives. They have an archive off-site, and it has thousands of prints starting from like the 1800s. Are they in like big volumes? Uh, are they hand-painted? Or yeah, so they're, they're mainly like the designer sketches, and then they have swatches of the old okay. um, fabrics. Cool. There's a really great book that talks about the Liberty Archives and makes you want to go there, but they don't allow it. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, especially with a sketchbook. Exa exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or a camera. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> um, this one is mosaics. We might need to bring this up close. Yeah, so this is much it. more interesting uh, up close, mm -hmm. and even by itself, actually. I mean, I think it's a great mix filler although it stands on its own but there's mm -hmm. a lot of detail in this There's a lot of detail and it was inspired by a scarf they made in 1960 to me it looks like something was beaded mm -hmm. uh, you see these um, this fretwork and I don't know yeah. it must not have been but so it was a scarf that's interesting when yeah. you go into the Liberty of London store one of the whole sections there is their scarf section and they yes. have beautiful scarves yes. Uh, not necessarily in the Tana lawn, but in silks and other things. Usually in silk. Yeah. And they're, they're beautiful. So this is the other colorway of what I'm wearing. And we've got some kind of olivey greens and a little more of like an orangey coral and steel blue. Um, and it looks just kind of fantastic with these and I, Yeah, colorways. I think all of these really go mm -hmm. together. And we, we did order them with the idea that we would have multiple colorways of things. So you could mix them if you wanted to. The nice thing about all of these Tana lawns and, and the cottons from Liberty of London is they're wider than your normal 45 inches of cotton. Aren't they like 54 or something? Yes. Uh, 54. Yeah, 54 inches. So, you know, they're pricier. They're well worth it. Anybody who oh, yeah. follows Liberty of London knows that there's nothing like this yeah. on the, in the whole planet <laughs> of fabric. Uh, so not only the, the fabric itself, but the motifs, uh, but then, you know, you get more for your money because yeah. of the width as well. And they wear well. Yeah, they do. So, um, yeah. This one is perfect for now. This is a fall, a fall woodland. Yeah. Um, they said the original was a little sketch from the 1920s um, that they mm. took from that, and it was painted in a flat gouache. So you, do you say, is it gouache? Is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. it? Gouache. Gouache is uh, opaque watercolor. Yeah. yeah. So you get this like real flattened mm -hmm. kind of aspect to it. Interesting. And then we're back to Athena. So we, we're pretty selective when we order from the collections. Uh, they, they send us the whole collection, which can be 50 pieces or more. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we, we, and they do, Liberty of London does now use, utilize more of their prints in their own products, which mm -hmm. I don't think they've always done, mm -hmm. I don't think. I think like it, umbrellas and bags yeah. and, uh, they've, have they always done clothes? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. uh, sleepwear and, Oh, everything. Yeah. So it's really, if you're ever in London, of course, in my mind, that's the... It's the only place to go. The only place. If you <laughs> only have one place to that's go, place that's to go. where you need to go. <laughs> yeah. But as Betsy said, there are some fabulous books uh, uh, available. In fact, I even gave you one for Christmas. I have no mm -hmm. idea which one it was, but I knew you'd like it, whatever it was. Yeah. And it talks about the history of the company and all that. But the, to think that, um, what is it, two times a year, the collections? Or is it more than that? Is so, it four times? Right now they're doing two large collections. They do a spring, summer, and an autumn, winter. And they've started doing kind of mini collections okay. in between. So we've got some stuff coming from a little mini collection. Okay. Now, and all of that's done off-site? No, they do have a design department, department at the store. At the store. But you can't yeah. see it. 
No, 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 you can't. It's in so the office buildings are in the back of the store, okay. off of Carnaby Street. And when I worked there, the um, copy machine was in the oh, fabric nice. department. And so if I had to go copy things, I'd go in there, and it was this tiny little room. And I was always like, Yeah, <laughs> what's going on over there? <laughs> I'd like to think now they've given them a bigger. Room yeah, it sounds like. It was, Sounds like it. Well, we know that they sold the uh, some of the classic collection, what I call the little ditties, to one of the big box stores. Um, but they will never have the collections. Nope. So there are not very many places in the U.S. who are carrying these fabrics. We're one of one of a handful. Am I overstating yes. that? No, I, don't I think, think that's, I am. I think that's right. Um, yeah. And when we order. I mean, there's a lot of fabric in the collection, but we really look at it with like a garment viewpoint. Right. So we go for the larger patterns. Um, right. And then think of how the small ones can interact with them, right. as opposed to just the small ones yeah. that people use a lot for crafts. Yeah. Well, I love the way you use the uh, a, a contrast for the back yoke. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of uh, contrasting under collars sometimes, maybe the stands only. Mm -hmm. The binding on the inside of the sleeve could be a contrast. So you can fool around with that yeah. uh, and have some fun with, with various fabrics. Of this colorway, what would you do for the major and then the insert? Well, seeing yours, of course, I love <laughs> this one. Um, and then, you know, I think maybe I like this one as an insert and mm -hmm. this one as a bit of little bits, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the under collar, the stands, the mm -hmm. bindings. I like this. It's pretty strong. So this could be the main one. Mm -hmm. um, this and this, to me, I see it main, as main ones. And then again, this and this. And actually, I like this, too, with it as maybe like the eight. insert mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. So I think this whole side is pretty mix and match. Yeah. yeah. As is this side. As is this one, yeah. that's right. Um, um, and then this, and then, yeah, this one can actually go over really here as well. I mean, mm -hmm. I love those together. Uh, this, mm -hmm. this. So this bottom one is, is a pretty transitional yeah. piece as well. But these three are amazing together. Yeah. So. I love those. Um, so, do we have any questions? We've been rat, you know, rattling on here. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's really exciting to see these. It was funny. Um, we, as we uh, get fabrics in, we we have them on rolls, as you see, and we put them on shelves, and you can't always see what's there. But we've had about three So Kansas events uh, since July or May or whatever it's <laughs> been, and people find these. Yeah. Uh, because they are so unusual. And, and I was even in Mexico, believe it or not, with a painting teacher, and she started talking about Liberty of London fabrics that she could never find it. Oh, really? I said, oh, well, Come I, I can help you with that. <laughs> and she, she knew about them. She doesn't sew, but she buys them. Mm -hmm. And then another painting teacher that I met in Santa Fe had, had bought the fabric and had all her shirts made out of Liberty of London. Wow. So there is a sort of cult following of these fabrics. Yeah. And again, if you like them, you need to get them now because uh, they're not going to be around. There's a woman I follow on Instagram, and she loves Liberty, and she collects certain of the classic collections, and she takes a swatch and puts them in books. So every time there's a new colorway, say of the Wiltshire, which is like a berry, um, she buys it, and she does a little swatch in the book, and she has volumes. Wow. And if you go on her Instagram, she'll like flip through. That's cool. And you can see all the colors over the years. That's so cool. I started putting swatches of the stuff I get in a book. That's, just that's so pretty I can cool. Look at them. Um, <clears throat> what thread weight would you use for the fabric? Well, that's interesting. I think you could use the standard 50 weight thread, but Cotton. you could, and it would be quite appropriate to uh, sew with a lighter weight thread, the 60 weight. Believe it or not, the 60 weight is lighter than the 50 weight. I know that's not. <laughs> It's Doesn't weird, <laughs> but you could use the 60 weight cotton thread. Mm -hmm. So use cotton thread, 50 weight or 60 weight, uh, either one. I mean, I just always use standard weight thread. I do too, basically. We do carry the um, 60 weight. Now the 60 weight's available in, oh, just a fraction of the colors of the 50 weight. And I, I mean, I could tell Deb, if you order thread, which is an add-on to the orders on our website, um, we could tell her to, to send 60 weight uh, if the color works, 
Yeah. If we or if you're a real, we'll probably honestly send you 50 weight right. unless you have a special request. You can email us or call us if you want right. the other fabric. Yeah, I just, other I just worry about stock on the 60. Yeah, weight, so. I know. It, we don't sell it as often, but I do use it on very lightweight, like chiffon for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sewing with cotton thread for sure. Don't use the polyester. Mm -hmm. um, for the swing tee project, could you use a lightweight ponte? What? Um, the only thing about Ponte on the Swing Tea project is uh, one of the features of this is this curly raw edge. Ponte is not a jersey, so it's not going to curl. It also doesn't ravel. If that's a look that you like, which is a little more um, kind of a pure and, mm -hmm. and sophisticated perhaps, then yes, I mean, it's totally appropriate for the Swing Tea. But if you want this, uh, Roughened edge, Ponte's not going to do that. Now you could do the body in Ponte and do like a. Um, the facing in the Ponte yeah, like or the something else. Yeah, you could do yeah. that. But, but you can see the, the way this is uh, done, because it curls to the right side, you have an opposing curl. Yeah. If you got that class for the month, um, is the class live already? Yes, the class is live already. You know, I think Alice is going to have to tell us that. Uh, I think it was supposed to be Thanksgiving, but that doesn't work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't remember. I don't remember when we switched it. We did switch it. Uh, it should be on your course It's page. either the week before that or the week after that. Yeah. Uh, so it's either next week or... Yes. We have two... That went out in the email. Yeah, yeah. we have two Zoom, Zoom Q&As. For every project. One is usually at noon and one is at four o'clock, but honestly I just can't recall the exact dates. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Have we done it? I think so. Can we show that stripey version? Because I want to sure. show that insert in the back because I think you see it really well. I like how neat this is and you kind of offset the stripes a little bit. Yeah. That's kind of a Now this is this one doesn't look as gathered, but it certainly would have been. I don't quite know. But there's, of course, no way to match stripes when you have a gather. This is yeah. wider than this. Yeah. Do you but, think yeah. that's just the weight of the fabric, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Because this is pretty, pretty cool, lovely. the way the stripes work. Or, you know, we could have run the stripes the other direction, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, didn't, I don't think I made this. I think maybe Kathy made it, but I can't swear to that. Yeah. I have, always have to look at, well, are there some tailor tacks someplace? Then I'll know. <laughs> We always know when Kathy made something because she leaves the tailor tacks in so she can show them off. <laughs> um, could you make the trio in a sweatshirt fabric? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the next time we show the trios, as a matter of fact, we're going to show them in knits. So, yes, yeah, sweatshirt fabric, knit fabric, uh, crochet, open weave, lacy fabrics. Mm -hmm. I have one uh, that I almost showed today, actually, that was a, a lace, which sounds dressy, but then it has applique flowers all over oh, it. Cute. It's pretty cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Betsy, excuse me, you were talking about that artist. And just in case anybody's interested in her information, if you have it, what was her name again? Susie Lipsy, S-O-O-Z-Y, space, L-I-P-S-E-Y. Her website didn't have as much on it, but if you look her up on Instagram, and it's just at Susie Lipsy, she had some really beautiful images, really interesting work. All right, so you can see that on your screen. Mm -hmm. And, oh, a couple more questions. Is there just one view of the trio shirt? Yes. There's no A or B. It's just no, the one, one right? No, one view. Okay. Right. And it's called the Trio Top. It's the Trio Top. We have the Trio Top and the Trio T-shirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. One view of both. Okay, I don't see any other questions. All right, so Bessie, what's on sale today? What is on sale Or for sale the next today? week? All of these beautiful liberties are 15% off, so you can buy them and pet them and like maybe sew with them <laughs> or just look at them. Yeah. Um, and if you do buy them and sew with them, I'd love to see your finished projects and see if you mixed and matched or if you just mm -hmm. went with a straight fabric. Yep. So, oh, and then of course the Trio top digital pattern is on sale. 
The Trio T-shirt digital pattern is on sale. And remember, that goes up to size 3X. We have two tutorials, collars and stands, which has two collar and stand techniques. And I believe the first one um, actually is using the Trio shirt top. Okay. And the other one is three bias bindings, which includes the technique that we looked at earlier. All right. Okay. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Betsy, for coming Chorus. over. And thank you, Erin, for hanging in there. <laughs> uh, but we'll see you next Tuesday or next week.